Welcome to physics class. Today we are going to talk about electric field due to the infinite line of charge. What we mean by infinite line of charge is that when we have a wire and this wire is too long compared to the distance where we calculate this electric field. In this case, we have the distance is x. This x is too short compared to the length of the wire. Uh, now, to calculate the electric field of infinite uh, line of charge, first we are going to take an element of charge. Let's consider this wire is charged positively. It can be charged negatively. The principle will be identical. So, if a little is charged positively, we take an element of charge. This element of charge, it will create an element of electric field. We pass the line from the element of charge at point M, where we calculate the electric field. And then this electric field, DE, will be away from the charge. If the charge it was negative, let's put it in blue. If the charge it was negative, the electric field will be toward the charge. This is the difference. So if the charge is positive, you'll be going away from the from point M, if uh, or away from the line or element of the charge. If the charge is negative, you'll be going toward the element of the charge. Now let's clean this so we don't get confused. For now, we focus on positive charge. Now, uh, if we look to this wire, we have this origin is O. And uh, the line is symmetrical uh, from the origin. This is infinite line. We take an origin and upper side, the lower side. If we go to the lower side of this wire and symmetrically at equidistance, uh, at the same distance from the center, and we call, if I take this part, what happened of this element of charge D2? It will create also an electric field DE. Remember, we said we pass the line from the charge towards the point M, and then it will be in that direction. Make it smaller, that direction. This is your BD. Now, this element of charge also it will have horizontal component and vertical component on x-axis. This DE, it will have vertical and horizontal component like this one. This vector DE, we project it on x-axis, we have dx, and we project it on vertical axis, we have dy. What do we see here? From the center, the lower part and the upper part, they have a vertical component that cancels each other. So what does mean? The electric field due to the infinite line of charge will produce an electric field vertical upward and electric vertical downward they cancel each other that means the vertical component vanishes so let's clean this all we have is the horizontal component what does mean this infinite line of charge uh, it will produce an electric field it will be only in x direction that means all we have is this dx this dx will be just the de. If I consider this angle as theta, it will be just de cosine of theta. Remember, it will be this is our x axis. It will be in x direction. So uh, this I call it unit vector x. Means if anything that goes east, I call it x. And anything that goes west, I call it minus negative x hat. It, uh, okay, so uh, the definition of electric field uh, is given by dq uh, Coulomb constant times dq over r squared. r is the distance between the element of charge and the point M where we calculate the electric field. And dq is the element of charge that we have here. We we'll call it DQ. Okay, so this DQ has a density 
and this density is uniform, that means the distribution of this charge inside this wire is completely uniform. What that means, if you take the total charge over the total length of the wire, it will be the same thing if you take the element of charge over the element of length. And in this case, we call it, the, this density, we call it uniform. Uniform means if you take the whole wire, the, the charge in the whole wire, and you divide it by the length, you'll be identical uh, to the lambda. You'll be identical if we, you take the small element of charge and you divide it by the small element of the length. This is what we mean by uniform density. Now, what does mean if I take this uh, dq, uh, let's look for blue color, dq, will be, uh, we say dq over dl, let me, let me clean this now, so we don't make a mess. We have dq, we said lambda is dq over d, in this case I use the dy, not the uh, dl, if I take uh, dq, over dy, it will be the same thing, like I said, the q over the total length of the wire, if I call all this total length is y, for example, or the total length, I call it l if I want to. Okay, so what I mean here, dq will be just lambda dy. Now, let's continue. Okay. Now, we know our electric field will be only on x direction. So, let's put it here again. We have d x in x direction. It will be just d e cosine of theta in x direction. We say d e is Coulomb constant times d q divided by r squared times cosine of theta in x direction. This is what will be de x. Now, the objective is to find the total electric field, it means we need to sum all this element of electric field produced by this element of charge completely until we get to the end. So, in this case, we need to use the sum of all dex. The sum in this case will be just the integral of dex. This ex, so uh, it will be the integral of k dq over r squared cosine of theta in x direction. Remember, this is a vector. If I add these arrows, means that they, these ones they have to be in vector. And x is <coughs> x hat. We say this unit vector. Now, what do we see here? We said also uh, I need to replace dq with lambda dy. We said dq is lambda dy. Then again, our electric field will be Coulomb constant times lambda times let me repeat this we said uh, the electric field will be k lambda dy over r squared cosine of theta. This is what will be our EX. Uh, this vector, we can add it just to the end. We just solve what is here. Uh, and this will be just EX. Uh, now, what do we see here? We see many variables in one integral. It's very hard to solve this integral with multiple variables in one integral. What does mean? We need to find the relationship between between dy and cosine theta and r. K and lambda 
We said lambda is constant is uniform. K is Coulomb constant is uh, is uh, constant. We can take them outside from the integral, but we need to find the relationship between uh, dy, r squared, and cosine theta. Now let go for dy. If I call uh, uh, if this is from here to here, I call it y. I just put it here before, but let's say this is my y-axis. Now, what I see here, tangent of theta, clean this, tangent of theta, it will be just y over x. Remember x, which is this one, this is my x. This x is constant, is fixed distance from the wire towards the point M. Now, if I want my dy, what I need to do, uh, the dy, if I derivate d tangent of theta to d theta, what will be? It will be just 1 over cosine of theta squared. And this is, it will be dy over x d theta. Because x is constant, we take it out from variable. What, what that means, your dy will be just x d theta over cosine of theta squared. Now, I found, put it by itself, I put dy by itself. Now I found what is dy in term of, the, of theta. Now what I need? I need r. r, which is this. We said this is our theta. is the same thing as this theta. So our cosine of theta also is cosine of theta. It will be just x over x over 1r is the adjacent, the definition is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, uh, what does mean? 1 over, okay, I just repeat this here. We say dy is x over cosine theta squared d theta. 1 over r squared, we just cosine of theta over x squared. And then we go back to our electric field. We have this k lambda outside because they are constant. Integral dy cosine theta over r squared. Now all we need to do is replace dy and 1 over r squared and calculate our electric field. So dy we said is, this will be the integral. Let me, let me clean this. Okay, we said uh, we said e x again. It will be k lambda integral of d y, which is x d theta over cosine of theta squared. This is d y, and then uh, times one over r squared, which is cosine of theta over x squared and then times cosine of theta. So what do you see here? Cosine theta vanishes, cosine theta squared vanishes. I have x squared at the downstairs. It vanishes with x upstairs. I have left to 1 over x and cosine theta d theta. So ex equals k lambda integral of cosine of theta d theta and x downstairs. I put it outside the integral. Why? Because the distance x is fixed, is constant. We calculate the electric field from a point m distant x fixed. Now, the what is our theta? Theta is this angle. Now, this angle varies between what and what? Now, my wire, it goes from infinity plus infinity, uh, infinity and here minus infinity. 
what that means. If we go to minus infinity, what goes this theta? This theta goes here, it goes, it, it goes to minus pi over 2. If we go to infinity, my theta it goes to plus pi over 2. So the integral will be minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So the integral of cosine will be sine. Now to uh, remember, let me clean this. Clean this. So to uh, remember this, you 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 have cosine of theta, sine of theta minus cosine of theta and minus sine of theta. If you do the integration, to integrate from cosine, uh, the integral of cosine, we go in that direction. The integral of sine, we give us negative cosine. Integral of negative cosine will be sine, etc. Like that. That means if I want to integrate the cosine, it will be sine. Integral. Now, if I go in derivative mode, in derivative mode, if I go, it goes backward. If uh, the derivative, let me uh, choose a different color. The derivative will be in that way. The derivative of sine will be cosine. Yeah, it'll be. Uh, the derivative of cosine will be minus sine, etc. We go that way. That means, uh, so to remember it first, the derivative of cosine <coughs> will be negative sine. The derivative of sine will be cosine, but the integral we are looking for, the integral of cosine, the integral of cosine will be sine. That means your electric field will be k lambda over x. The integral of cosine will be uh, sine. Sine of theta will be between pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So the sine of pi uh, over 2 will be 1 minus sine of minus pi over 2 will be minus minus 1 it will be plus 1. That means in this case you'll be twice k lambda over x. This is what will be our electric field. Now <clears throat> uh, this k uh, Coulomb constant also, Coulomb constant is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Now, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, if I replace 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 with k, my electric field will be just lambda Yeah, uh, let me clean this. So, let's go back here. Okay. You'll be, uh, let's put it slowly, 2 over x, and k we said 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 times lambda. Now what do you see? 2 vanishes here. Then what do you have? Lambda over 2 pi epsilon 0 x. So our electric field on x-axis produced by the infinite line of wire, it will be what? It will be 1 over 2 pi epsilon 0 lambda I'm um, sorry, let's clean this lambda lambda and this here x then remember is a vector it will have x direction that means it's facing east 